Hello all and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about one of history's greatest revolts. To some it's known as the Third Servile War, but to most it's the Spartacus Revolution. Spartacus was born in Thrace in around 103 BC. He served with the Roman legions, however he would later go on to desert. Following this, he was captured and sold into slavery. Spartacus would end up being purchased by a gladiator school where he was trained to fight in arenas for the entertainment of the Roman public. Instead of suffering his fate in the gladiatorial ring, he had decided to instead escape in 73 BC with a group of other like-minded slaves. The men would make their way to Campania and then make camp on Mount Vesuvius. Here he would appoint himself captain of all those present. Slaves from around the empire would hear of the gladiators now turned rebels in Campania and with the hopes of a better life, escape their masters and join them. Here their numbers would slowly swell until finally a force of Romans was sent to put an end to it. The only issue being that the Romans that were sent were a measly 3,000 men strong. This small force was led by Gaius Claudius Glaber, who thought that because the rebels had set themselves up in the mountain, he could deal with them by simply starving them out. This dream was shattered, however, when the horde of rebels charged down from above and routed the small Roman force. It is unknown if Glaber survived the battle, as his name does not show up in the historical record after 73 BC. After the embarrassing defeat, the job of clearing up the pesky rebels was handed to Verinius, who upon seeing the enemy battlements notes that the rebels were entrenched like a real military force. After some time was spent getting his men ready, Verinius would charge the rebel lines, only to find that they were totally abandoned. They had snuck away right under the Romans' noses. Spartacus had led his cohort from their positions to the region of Lucania, where there was major anti-Roman sentiment and also great land for guerrilla warfare. Verinius, after hearing where the rebels had escaped, made haste to catch up with them. However, after arriving, he and his forces were crushed in several engagements. His men were killed, and he himself barely escaped. All of the soldiers' gear and weaponry was taken, and the people in the area, upon hearing of Spartacus' victory, flocked to join him. Spartacus now led 70,000 men. The rebel band moved back into Campania, and were now in possession of the majority of southern Italy. This, however, was not enough for the Senate to act. It took the sacking of multiple cities in both Campania and Lucania before they deemed the threat worthy of action. They made the decision to send both of that year's consuls and their attached legions to hunt down the rebel army, which at this time in 72 BC had fled towards the Alps. Spartacus and his men were within a stone's throw of escape when for reasons still not fully understood, they turned around and marched past Rome and back to Lucana. The Roman war effort was then handed over to Marcus Licinius Crassus, who was but a praetor at the time. Upon his designation, he would make the unthinkable decision of implementing the practice of decimation upon the legions of the two consuls. Decimation is where for every 10 Roman soldiers, one would be executed. This practice was incredibly unpopular and would eventually be phased out of usage during the empire. Crassus did this to apparently restore order amongst the men. Spartacus would go on to defeat two legions under Crassus's legate Mummius and then made a dash for the Strait of Messina in an attempt to move into Sicily. The area was the location of the last two servile wars and it was believed that he could rally more men on the island. This plan was however thwarted due to the fact that Spartacus had hired pirates to transport his troops. And well, pirates are not exactly known for their honour and they left him and his men stranded. Crassus used his monumental luck to build a blockade of the entire toe of Italy. He built fortifications that stretched a staggering 60 kilometres. He, like his predecessor Glaber, was going to starve the rebels out. Spartacus at this point was beyond desperate and during a snowstorm one dark night, he and his men charged and vaulted the walls. They were once again free in southern Italy. Crassus, after this embarrassing turn of events, knew that he now had to end the war with haste. He believed at the time that the only way to do this was by summoning Lucius Licinius Lucullus and Pompey back from Spain to aid in the battle. This would be a decision that he would go on to greatly regret. Spartacus and his forces would move to the mountainous terrain of Petelia. Here he would deal a victorious blow against the pursuing Roman vanguard. This small victory would enrich his men with a sense of vigour. They would decide then and there that they would no longer retreat. They would stand here and fight. The rebels hardened themselves for the coming battle, with Spartacus allegedly killing his steed while stating that if his army carried the day, he would have his choice from among the fine horses of the Romans, and if he lost, he would no longer have need for a mount. Unfortunately for Spartacus, in 71 BC, the latter would be true. In the ensuing pitch battle, the rebels would be utterly destroyed. Spartacus himself would perish with the majority of his men, and those that had escaped would be hunted by Pompey and slaughtered at the steps of the Alps. And those that were taken prisoner were crucified and put on display along the Appian Way, to serve as a warning to those who would harbour rebellious thoughts. On returning to Rome, Pompey would take full credit for the defeat of the rebellious slaves, and would receive a triumph. Crassus, on the other hand, would be given nothing but a mention. Both men, however, would go on to serve as consuls in the following year as a reward for their victory. 
Thank you for watching all the way to the end. It means a lot. If you're interested in more content like this, feel free to subscribe. Anyway, I'll see you next time, and until then, goodbye.